If you've ever been on a cruise, you know it's usually not an all-inclusive vacation and the bill at the end can be nothing short of eye-watering. There has to be a better way, but what is it and who offers it? If you're new to cruising and just researching the all-inclusive packages, you've never had the joy of seeing that astronomical bill at the end of your cruise. I don't remember going there and drinking that. Are they sure they're right? How do I check it? How do I fix it? For most experienced cruisers, this has been our life on most ships. The beverage packages they offered were so outrageous that you'd have liver failure at the end of the cruise trying to get your money's worth. And then there are the gratuities that we pay our stateroom attendant and dining room staff. These have been automatically added to the bill for years now, but you have to remember to budget for them. Let's talk internet packages, multiple devices, kids and parents alike wanting to stream their favorite shows. The ships have the technology now, but it wasn't that long ago that there was no Wi-Fi. You had to use a shared computer in an internet cafe and pay by the minute. Of course, many luxury and ultra-luxury lines are completely all-inclusive. Wi-Fi, beverages, and crew appreciation are part of the cruise fare. But what about the mass-market cruise lines like Royal Caribbean, Carnival, and Norwegian, and the premium lines like Celebrity, Holland America, and Princess? Well, I think they've heard us now, and most cruise lines are offering some kind of package for internet, gratuities, and beverages. I've looked at a lot of these packages, and the value is really in the eye of the beholder. You need to have a good, honest idea of what you spend and consume on board to make sure it's worth it. Because the cruise lines are smart, they are pricing the packages based on what they know their passengers will consume. They are not going to lose money. Today we're going to look specifically at Princess Plus and Princess Premier, and the reason for that is I believe they are good value, and of the major cruise lines, I find they are the most upfront with what the packages entail and why they benefit you. We'll dive deep, compare the packages, look at a competitive cruise line, and finally break down what a day on a cruise looks like for me. This past fall, I had the pleasure of sailing on three Princess cruises using their Princess Plus packages, so I know what the value is over a longer period of time, not just a seven-day cruise. If there's still value there after the initial novelty of being on a cruise wears off, then it's a winner to me. Keep in mind that the first and second passenger must both have the same package in a stateroom. If you have a third or fourth passenger in your cabin, they do not automatically get the package, but can be added by your travel agent or by Princess. Let's take a run through the packages, shall we? Now, remember that each person gets their own package, and we'll be talking about what each person gets, not the stateroom. Wi-Fi is the first item on the list, with Princess Plus offering one device, and the Premier package offering four. It's very easy to switch between devices, your phone to laptop to tablet, so you'll need to determine if the four device option is worth it. It's possible to upgrade to a four device package on board without taking Princess Premier, if you want to connect a kid's device or extra devices. It makes more sense to do this than add an extra $20 per day per person, if that's the only thing you need from Premier. Both packages include your crew appreciation or gratuities for your stateroom attendant and your dining room staff. Nothing special there. Nice to have that taken care of in advance, as long as you aren't one of those nasty people who remove this from their bill and slink away on disembarkation day. But I digress. The beverage packages are different in the amount that you can spend per drink, and here's where you need to look at your own habits before deciding which one is right for you. Most drinks on the menu are under $15, with the majority being between $9 and $12 last time I sailed. The exception to this is the better wines by the glass. They tended to be near $20 or slightly more. It's worth noting that if you're on Princess Plus and order a drink that is more than $15, you only pay the difference plus the 18% gratuity on the difference. So if it's just an occasional glass of wine that might push you over, you should be okay on Plus. It's also worth noting that Princess Plus and Princess Premier include the 18% drinks gratuity in the cost of the package. You don't pay per drink and you don't get charged ahead of time. This is a very important factor when you compare these two packages to the free drinks package that other cruise lines offer. See the link at the top right hand corner for 14 ways that cruise lines get more money out of your pocket and that includes that little gem. Moving down the list, both packages offer you the unlimited juice bar. Not my thing, but you do you. The premium desserts are a nice touch, but shouldn't be an incentive to upgrade. The desserts come from the gelato bars on board, depending on which ship you are on. They were mixes of gelato, pastry, and candy. Very artistic. You probably call them sundaes, but you probably don't need more than one per day, let alone two or unlimited. 
The fitness classes would be a small percentage of Princess passengers from my experience, so again, if this is something that you would normally pay for, it might be worth upgrading to premium. The casual dining meals could be a good incentive to upgrade. Not to be confused with specialty dining, these venues such as Alfredo's Pizzeria, Kai Sushi, Ocean Terrace, O'Malley's Irish Pub, and more. As of the posting date of this video, the charge for these restaurants is $14.99 per person without the package for a three-course meal. If you plan on eating at one of these venues every day, then it might be worth to upgrade to Premier. Princess is now charging a one-time fee for Ocean Now delivery for passengers who do not have Princess Plus or Princess Premier. This means that the first time you use the Medallion app to order food or drinks, you'll be charged $14.99 US. This is per passenger, not per stateroom. After you're charged, you can order them for the rest of the cruise free of charge. I'm not sure if this makes the Princess Plus or Premier a better value or if it's a case of nickel and diming your passengers. It's also worth noting that if you do not have Princess Plus or Premier and you order room service by phone, you'll be charged $5 per order even though you paid the Ocean Now fee described earlier. This doesn't apply to breakfast orders placed on the hangar the night before or orders placed in Ocean Now. Finally, let's have a look at the extras Princess Premier gets you so you can see if it's worth upgrading. The photo package is a nice touch for those who are interested. Our interest in ship photos has waned over the years as we've found that they usually end up staying in their folders forever on a shelf. Princess Prizes is a lottery game that occurs when you open your stateroom door. You'll have to do a little more research on that yourself because I don't totally understand the value here. Princess Premier also receives two specialty restaurant visits per guest at venues such as Sabatini's, Crown Grill, or Sulemer, among others. Cover charge at these restaurants is usually $39 per person. This is a definite value. Finally, Princess Premier guests have a number of reserved seats in the main theater for production shows. Note that this is main stage cast shows, not guest performance or other events. These seats are released to the rest of the passengers five minutes before the show. On my recent cruises, finding a seat wasn't an issue for the late shows. There we go, that's the comparison between the two packages. But does it give you value? Let's have a look at that. If you're enjoying this content, please give us a like and a subscribe to the channel for more. Before we move along and have a look at the value I found in Princess Plus during my recent cruises, let's have a look at a comparable premium cruise line's prices for the individual components that make up the primary reason to get Princess Plus. Wi-Fi at $29.23 per day is higher than Princess's current price per day when purchased for the voyage. Their price right now is $24.99. The gratuities of the competitive cruise line is for an inside cabin and it's above Princess's current gratuity pricing of $16 for inside ocean view and balcony, $17 for mini suite, or $18 for full suites. The competitor is currently charging $23 per day per guest for suites. Finally, at the time of recording, Princess doesn't offer a beverage package that includes alcoholic beverages outside of the Princess Plus or Premier package. The competitor here charges $89 per day for a package that includes drinks up to $10 and $109 for drinks costing up to $17, plus a 20% gratuity upon purchase of the package. You can probably figure out who the competitor is and quickly do the math. Princess Plus and Premier are by far and away a better deal. Perhaps it has something to do with the differences in passenger demographics, but I'm all in on Princess's packages here. For me, I've always taken the Princess Plus option instead of Premier, although while filming this, I think I've convinced myself to give Premier a try next time. Let's see where my value lies. Gratuity, $18, can't and shouldn't get away from that one, and if somebody goes above and beyond, a little cash and a good word on the survey never goes wrong. Internet, $24.99, can't live with or work without it, so there it is, although I'm platinum on Princess, so that gets cut in half down to $12.49. Beverages. Okay, I'm not a drinker at home, but when I'm cruising and not working, I do tend to have more. Let's start with coffee. I'll enjoy two cappuccinos in the morning, $10. A beer with lunch, another $10. Perhaps a frozen drink in the afternoon, $12. Two glasses of wine with dinner, they're pretty small, $28. Sometimes a coffee or cocktail after the show, so we'll call that $8 on average. Drinks would add up to $78.44 per day, including a gratuity on the alcoholic beverages. This doesn't take into account any soda, extra coffees, or bottled water I may take. 
Adding it all up, without Princess Plus, I would be paying $108.93 per day on average. To me, the package is well worth it, and I really hope Princess doesn't mess around with it too much. There you go, we've broken it all down and done the math for you. Now it's your turn to have an honest look at what you're going to spend and see what works best. If you found this helpful, please give us a like and subscribe to the channel. We'll be breaking down all of the cruise lines and posting content that will help you save on your next cruise. Thanks for watching.